coming to you. And we invite you to come into one of our services to bring glory and honor to God's name, to raise up a supernatural army with signs and wonders and miracles. Can you be part of this move? Jesus name and everybody say Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 117. Only uh, two verses. It says, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, Lord, and all you peoples. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. That last line, the truth of the Lord of the Lord endures forever. Reminds me of Christ, who's, who proclaimed to me the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, he also said that my words will never, ever pass away. Thus the truth of the Lord endures forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Welcome one and all to uh, Abu Room uh, Ministries. Here at uh, the Days Inn in New York, Pennsylvania. So glad that uh, you've chosen to come out here. Um, we are here uh, every Sunday, starting at 4 o'clock for Sunday school, 5 o'clock for prayer, and 6 o'clock with the main message brought to us by the Holy Ghost. We are, we're also uh, here on the last uh, Thursday of uh, every month, at, starting at 7, with a special guest speaker. As well as every Tuesday at 7 at the Old Country Buffet for the Bible study. We are uh, seen locally here on uh, Comcast 16, the White Rose Network in the York area, uh, starting 8.30 a.m. Sunday morning, 8 p.m. Sunday evening, 4 a.m. Monday morning, and 1 p.m. Monday afternoon. Uh, we're also seen uh, three times a week on uh, the Bright Star Network in Pakistan every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at 1.20 p.m. This is the highest rated broadcast on the Bright Star Network, reaching approximately 42 million people at the last count. Okay. Uh, coming up will be the uh, Upper Room uh, Picnic and Baptism, uh, Saturday, August 27th at uh, Summit Grove Camp in New Freedom, Pennsylvania. Um, it will be a picnic. Uh, everybody who comes will be, will be asked to uh, please bring a covered dish. And uh, there will be uh, baptisms. If, um, if you've never been baptized, now is, a, uh, now, is a ch now is your opportunity to do so because that is a command of Christ. And uh, if you've been baptized before, but uh, have fallen away, but have recently come back, by all means, get baptized again. I did that myself not too long ago, and I'm very thankful that I did. Okay. Uh, over there are uh, past uh, monthly newsletters of Operable Ministries. Uh, take uh, any and as many as you'd like. If you don't currently receive one in the mail, Leave your name and address uh, back there, and we'll be sure that you get one. And also, we ask when coming forward and returning to your seats, please use the outer aisle, not the center one, as to not obstruct the camera. Thank you. No matter what, what's happening in their life, they always have something good to yes. say. Mm -hmm. So say amen. Amen. You get around an evil man, and all they want to tell you is, fall about you, and fall about him, and fall about her, and no good this, and no good that. And by the time you walk away from it, you feel like, someone say amen. amen. You can right there in radio land, television land, in Pakistan, around the world, wherever you might be. You know what I'm talking about. You might be one of them. I don't enjoy getting around those kind of people. Someone say amen. 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 Jimmy Swagger said years ago, and he shocked me when he said this. He said, I'd rather, when I go to church, Hear a man cursing, using God's name in vain, than to walk in church complaining. I thought, what? How many of both of them said? He said, if they're cursing, you'll say, God forgive them. But he said, somebody's complaining. He said, it's like a disease. He said, it's contagious. It'll go through the whole congregation. Somebody starts to complain about you or me or her, and you start telling somebody else, and after a while, you start to sign off. He said, yeah, you're right. Brother Humphrey don't have no love. He's hard. Did you 
you're receiving a smile. So you say amen. And after a while, you got that person buried, and they're nothing but a devil. So you say amen. But you get around somebody that's good hearted and so forth. Brother Humber, you're looking good. Jesus loves you. Jesus is going to use you. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said to tell you you're healed. Oh, hallelujah. But you get around somebody else, you look like you're going to die. I, that's all I hear from people. You look bad. You look like you're going to die. You think you're going to make it. People's got to be in the grave. Somebody say amen. I don't need to hear that kind of junk. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. My Lord God. This body has been hit with cancer. Roxanne, she's cancer on the leg. She's been having a rough time with different people. And now Dan Worley and Lucy, Dan, they can't preach for and so forth. And now Dan's in the hospital right now taking chemo. They had, took his whole lymph node out so it wasn't supposed to have cancer in his body. According to what doctors said, bad report. But how many know he don't have, need somebody to walk in and say, I don't think you're going to make it. Right, here's another young lady, head cancer. Come here beside me real quick. For years, she, she fought that cancer devil. But right now, she's totally set free. Somebody say, hallelujah. Amen. But how many know she did not need somebody to walk over to her and say, I don't think you're going to make it. And part of the reason you got cancer is the life you live. God's punishing you. <laughs> she heard that. How many of you know that's what they did with Job? Yep. The reason you're, you're thank you. the reason you're going through what you're going through, Job, you've sinned. Yeah. They criticized Job. Job said, yeah. Miserable comforters are you all. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. You ever how, how many of you go through enough rough times as it is? Yeah. Yeah. And you're not looking for any more. Yeah. Then you run into somebody, here they come with a garbage truck. They don't want you to just dump it on you, they want to put you in the garbage truck and grind you up and kill you and talk to somebody. Yes. Yes. My God. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth will speak. You, how many of you know it's very easy to find out who a person is if you just talk to a couple minutes? Because if you give them five minutes, you'll find out who they are. If, if they're a truck driver, you know what they're going to talk about? Like? They're going to bring up a truck driver. If they work in a factory or on a job or whatever, they're going to bring it up. Whatever is that God in their heart, out of the bunch of their heart, they're going to talk to you about it. Somebody say amen. It's easy to find. But you get around somebody that loves Jesus. Have you ever had somebody say, can't you talk to me about anything else except Jesus? First time I had my shop, you know what I say? No. That's the only thing that's in my heart. So I say that. But then you got the ones that, if you talk about Jesus, they'll knock you with, who do you think you are, holding them now? And they're actually trying to say, shut your mouth, don't talk to me. I want to talk to me here. The devil gets upset. Verse 46. This is a powerful verse. Why cost me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Why call me Lord? What does Lord mean? The one that owns you. It means a master. The one that owns me. He's my Lord. Back in slavery days, they called their master lords. They bought them from slave markets. So whatever that master said, they said, yes, Lord. Sarah called Abraham Lord. Not calling him God, but the one that controls my life. My husband controls my life. Abraham is my boss. He said, why call me Lord, Lord? The one who's supposed to own you. Possess your life. Take care of it. Why call me Lord, Lord? Not just Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm. Sounds really important. Yes, Lord, Lord. Like, oh man, I say it twice. That means I'm really 
Baptist folks, once saved, always saved, it makes it sound so wonderful. You ask Jesus to forgive you, you're eternally secure, you don't have to worry about nothing. But, but the Bible says that God is the author of eternal salvation in order to all them that obey Him. They say you don't have to obey Him. But Jesus turns around right here and says, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying, and do with them, I will show them unto who he's like. He wants you to do what he's saying to do. He said, I'll, I'll show you who, who you like. Go ahead. He's like a man that built his house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood arose, the stream beat venomously upon that house and could not shake it for it was found out on a rock. How many know if, if you do what Jesus said, you built your house on a rock with a rock too, and no, no matter what comes, it's not going to shake you. That's right. So we say, man. Well, what happens if you don't do what he says and you don't go to your house upon Jesus? That your your dependency is on your job. We've got people that's not even here tonight because J O B. Now it's okay if they have the job, you know, that they have to work at. But I know people that's just working overtime. Well, they're going to eat. Well, what's the Bible say about that? Worry don't worry about it. Eyes on the sparrow. Eyes on the sparrow. He said, don't worry what you eat, drink, or wear. You put them on your back. He said, but seek thee first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things are mentioned. Well, that's easy to say, but I've got to pay bills. You, you know, it's no use talking to those kind of people. And what happens is they get mad at you, and then they go around and say, Brother Humphrey's too demanding, too hard. Oh, he's telling me do's and don'ts. Well, guess what? I hate to wake somebody up, but the Bible is nothing but do's and don'ts. <clears throat> thou shalt, thou shalt not. So we say amen. Amen. <clears throat> you wonder why a preacher just throws their hands up and say, I'm done. So we say amen. Verse 49. But, but, everybody say but. but. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth and against the stream they beat and venomously and immediately it fell. Immediately it fell. That person was going to fall. Then what's he say? And the ruin of that house was great. You're not going to stand. Wonder why Jesus said those things. Why did Luke put it in the Bible? Put it in his writing. Why? How many of you know I can fill this place up very easily. All i got to do is start preaching tickle tickle. Make everybody feel good. Just tell it. Everything's going to work right. A woman was just so talking, getting her hair done the other day at the beauty store. A woman was sitting in there, and she was talking about prayer meetings she goes to and all this and that. But then she just ended up cursing, 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 cursing. A man came in, so I didn't see the prayer meeting lady. And so she said, well, next time she comes, lays hand on her and casts that devil out of her for her cursing. And then so my wife told her, she said, you can't go to heaven and curse her. She said, oh, she said, when I get there, me and Jesus will talk it over. It'll be all right. How many know that's not the way it's going to be? It's total democracy. Thou shalt not use God's name again. There you go with do's and don'ts. Not my word. The Bible said so. Oh, you're so mean, Brother Michael. You should say things. Brother, don't you know that these are last days and we're in days of gracious tickle tickle? Come on, talk to me. Mm -hmm. He said the ruin of the house was great. The ruin. That plate, that man is ruined. Mm -hmm. But once saved, always says, says, but he's still going to heaven. No. But the Bible says, God's the author of eternal salvation unto all in that. Obey him. One say goes says, you don't have to obey nothing. It's strictly by grace. Yes, that's how we got saved. Mm -hmm. 
But we stay saved by obeying His Word. Right. Somebody say amen. Amen. You people sitting out there watching these programs, you don't go to church. Just like the one guy told me just a little bit ago. He said, oh, I said, uh, you go to church. No, I said, I don't go to church. But I love Jesus with all my heart. I said, no, you don't. <coughs> I said to him, I said, what if your wife told you she loves you with all her heart, but she never comes home to you? She's out there running with all the other girls and work and this and that and so But she says, oh, I love my husband. He's in my heart, but she don't spend her time with you. Right. He said, you got a good point there. Mm. So I say, man. Amen. You know what people do when their preaching gets hard? They get out and they don't come back. One of my elders here years ago, he got so upset. He said, I can go to another church and I don't have to listen and go through the stuff that you say. I said, go. He went. Him and his wife. They went to a church. And guess what? There was nothing in their life anymore. I don't even know if they even go to church anymore. How do you know a little compromise, a little leaven? Leaven's a whole lot. He right. says, well, I don't go to church because it's full of hypocrites. Well, you're one of them. Somebody say amen. amen. Go ahead and talk about Jesus, but you don't serve him. And while you're talking about Jesus, you criticize everybody that is serving him. My own brother years ago got mad at me. I was on a job and it was rough. We was doing log, log skitter and stuff like that, you know. And I paid five hundred dollars to get the thing fixed and brought it back on the job and it won't work. And I had a big wrench and the wrench flew over and hit me and made me mad. I got upset for a second. I threw the wrench and it went down across the hill and down through the woods. I lost my big wrench. My brother come to me a little bit there. He said. Jim, you're supposed to be a Christian, you act that way? I said, let me tell you something right now. I said, it was wrong the way I acted. I said, why don't you become a Christian and show me how to do it? <laughs> See, it's easy to tell somebody how to do it, but you do it. Somebody say amen? Amen. Somebody say, my God, help me. Oh, my God, help me. My God, help me. My God, help me. Jesus talks about he bid the people come to the supper. And he said they all began with one excuse. They all began with one excuse. Even though there's three different excuses, he said it's all one excuse. How many of you know you can make up an excuse whatever you want to? I tell people with the wrong excuse to say I'll peanut butter. That's what I'm saying, man. One said, please excuse me, I can't come because I bought a field and I've got to go see it. I told this story many times. What kind of an idiot would go buy a field that you did not see? Right. Your field might be up on top of the Alps. <laughs> Somebody say amen. <laughs> come on, talk to me. <laughs> I mean, what an idiot. You could have too much. I I'd be ashamed of you to say something like that to somebody. Shows you how ignorant you are. Right. The other says, "Please excuse me. I bought a, a yoke of oxen. I got to go try it. And there's two bulls. I need to go check them out and see how they plow. And it'd be like today saying, I went and bought a tractor, and I want to see if it works. <laughs> well, you idiots, you ought to check it out before you bought it. So he can't be too smart. The third one said, "Please excuse me. I married a wife." Oh, uh, that that one there still got me bewildered. What does that got to do with coming to the supper of Jesus Christ, coming to the church, coming to me? I can't come because I'm married. You got Brother Humphrey confused. What is that? What kind of a reason can a man? Give because I married a woman. She wears the pants. That's what happened to my son's marriage. Instead of him being the head of the house, 
He left his wife to wear the pants, and I told him, I said, it's going to ruin your marriage. Mm. It did. He found his wife in bed with a 13-year-old boy, same, same age as his son. Whoa. How many know if you don't wear the pants, the man's supposed to be the head of the house. So if that woman says, you can't go to whatever suit, listen, I'm the head. Christ is my head. I'm going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, if you don't want to go, he that thinks more of his father, mother, wife, children, whatever, is not fit for giving heaven. How do you know the Word of God is strict and hard? Bible says if the righteous scarcely be saved, where are the unjust and godly stand? Think I've known about it. Somebody's living a righteous, holy life. If they scarcely make it to heaven, where are the unjust and godly stand? Right. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. What are we going to do? What should a man do? What did Jesus do when he sent them out and they did not come to the supper? He told them, go out and find others. Bid them to come. For those that was bidden is not worthy to come. They should be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. you, you know what he's saying? Forget them. If they don't want to come, Forget it. Forget it. Yeah. They're not worthy to come to my supper. They're cast out. But go bid others to come. That my house will take my before. I thank you all for all turning in. May God bless you and keep you. I'll just say this. Brother Humphrey's here to help you. I fight enough hell as it is. My wife, she goes through enough as it is. Sister Joan, the minister here, we go through a lot of hell. <coughs> but we're here to help you. If you want us to come out and pray with you or whatever, we'll come do so. But I'm going to tell you something. God told me years ago, tell the people this. God will do for us what we can't do, but he's not going to do for us what we can do. So say amen. amen. He's not going to put the whole armor of God on us. Dress yourself. So say, man, he's not coming to just come and get you out of bed and, and feed you so when you can get up and do it yourself. So say, man, so say, man, may God bless you and keep you. Everybody say, amen. amen. ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray, lay hands on you and your need and expect signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. Starting today, you will never be the same. Our website is upperroomministry.net. If you would like to schedule a speaking engagement, contact our ministry. All glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen.